Hello and welcome to the Atlanta Motor Speedway for race 4 of 36 in the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series season. The Golden Corral 500. Today, 42 drivers will take on the second mile and a half on the season. Second of many mile and a halves. And see who will come out on top and who will get the big old fish trophy. Now let's take a look at your starting lineup. On the pole was Andy Houston coming off his win at Las Vegas last week. Starting alongside him is the 2003 winner of this race, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Denny Hamlin, the highest rookie in the field, starting alongside Matt Kenseth. Tony Stewart, the 2002 winner of this race, starts alongside Clint Boyer, the second highest rookie in the field. Greg Biffle, the defending winner of the spring race here, starting alongside Carl Edwards. Then it's Casey Atwood next to Jimmy Johnson. Harvick, the 2001 winner of this race, starts alongside Kyle Busch. Dale Jarrett and Danny O'Quinn Jr. start in row 7. Row 8 consists of Scott Riggs and Jeff Burton. Casey Kane starts in 17th alongside Jeff Gordon, the other winner in 2003 at Atlanta. He won the fall race. Behind him is his teammate Brian Vickers and Jeff Green, the defending winner from the fall race in 05. Then Casey Mears and Jamie McMurray starting next to his old ride. Behind them you have Kurt Busch and Mike Bliss. Ryan Newman starts pretty mid-pack with Robbie Gordon to his outside. Another rookie, Martin Truex Jr., starts alongside Dave Blaney in the 22 Caterpillar Dodge for Bill Davis Racing. Mike Wallace makes his first start in the 49 car for BAM Racing alongside Joe Nemechek. Reed Sorensen, the final Chip Ganassi entry, starts alongside Travis Quapel in the 32 Tide Ride. Then in row 17, you have Sterling Marlin and Tony Raines. Kyle Petty starts deep in the field alongside Ken Schrader. Bobby Labonte, Daytona 500 winner, starts alongside Elliott Sadler. Then in the final two rows, it's Michael Waltrip, Ward Burton, Jeremy Mayfield, and Paul Menard starts last. As the cars roll off the grid here, we'd like to take a look at the point standings. After three races, your points leader is Matt Kenseth, who has had three top fives and three top tens, naturally. Behind him is Andy Houston, 25 points back, then Denny Hamlin, 30 back, then Junior, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Burden, Jeff Gordon, Carl Edwards, Kevin Harvick, and Kurt Kyle Busch, excuse me, is your top 10. But as the cars round turn four, we get ready to go racing here in Atlanta. And the green flag is out. We're underway in the Golden Corral 500. Andy Houston got a really good break off the uh, the start there. Let's see if he'll be able to lead lap one, unless Denny Hamlin has anything to say about it. Whoa, he gets right to the back bumper. Already aggressive. Denny Hamlin really wanted to lead lap one, but it's not going to happen. Andy Houston leads the first lap. He gets those five extra bonus points. That'll help him in the chase. There is no chase. That'll help him towards his championship points total. You see Andy Houston holding off the two Gibbs cars of Hamlin and Big Orange. Tony Stewart back there. Tony looking for second on his own teammate. Won't be able to get it. Hamlin clears. They'll go back to single file for the first 10, 11 or so spots. Andy Houston seems to be a cha uh, real early championship favorite here. You know, he led early as Hamlin goes underneath him. He led at Auto Club. He pulled the amazing fuel strategy last week. And he's leading early here. But not anymore as Denny Hamlin takes the lead. Tony Stewart's going to try and follow through as well. That will relegate Andy Houston the third if he can get the job done. Off the corner, maybe. 
Yes. But he still those outside. And he might want to get down quick because as you can see, he's got a couple of hungry drivers back there. You see Dale Earnhardt Jr. hasn't won this year. Greg Biffle hasn't won this year. They'll be looking to get by him and try and attack this Gibbs 1-2 that's happening so far. You see Greg Biffle here. He's currently 17th in points. He only has one top 10 to his name this season. So yeah, it hasn't been a great start. But, you know, it's it's really early. I mean, you still got 33 races, you know, to make up that. And points are still tight at this point. So a top five will probably set him up real nice. Tony Stewart's 16th in points as well. So, once again, they just need to have a good day today. Both these guys. Is, whoa! They almost made contact! That was close. That'll allow Junior to get underneath Tony here. He had the check up for Houston. That's allowed Houston to pull away. Hamlet's checked out of the hotel. And Dale Jr. makes a move underneath. Tony Stewart had eight wins last year en route to his championship. He won a quite a few mile and a halfs. He swept Phoenix. He won both the fall Charlotte race and the fall Texas race. So that team does have a good mile and a half program, which is exactly what they need for Atlanta because it's a mile and a half. In case you didn't know that. So they, they want to continue to perform like they had in the previous year. On these short to intermediate tracks. Like Las Vegas. Like Atlanta. Like Texas coming up. Like Bristol and Martinsville. They just need to keep doing what they're doing. And they'll be in the championship hunt in no time. Boy, Denny Hamlin has really stretched the lead out here. It's almost a second it seems. Or probably more than. Hamlin comes around to complete lap 10. You see back there Harvick making a move underneath Greg Biffle. Jibby Johnson trying to follow. Matt Kenseth right behind him. And then back there you see Casey Atwood who is currently hanging on to 9th or 10th. 9th right there, yeah. Carl's 10th. But Casey Atwood in that 43 Petty Dodge is running in the top 10 right now. As most everyone's gone single file, you can see Jeff Gordon has not made a lot of progress back there. Started 18th, I believe it was. I don't think he's made up much ground, if at any. In fact, I think he's lost ground, but... You see, it's kind of a... Real big spread to some of these guys back here, like O'Quinn. Labonte's made up some nice ground here. He started, what was that, like 37th? And he's up to like 20, 27th, I think, I want to say. We'll see when they cross the line, just to be sure. I know it's his 29th. I imagine he didn't really gain any spots. Yeah, let's see. 29th. So he's doing all right. You can see Mike Bliss is already off the track. Uh, we're getting word that that was engine troubles for that team. See the one and two car battling here. Drew trying to get by Kurt Busch to get in a 19th. 
As you see, Edwards trying to make a move on top of Jimmy, but that does not work. Jimmy's able to get the run off the corner and keep himself out there. You see, these, these three right here, Houston, Tony, and Harvick, have all kind of kept together, but there's one guy that they that just keeps pulling away and keeps showing up week in and week out with car capable winning cars, and that's Denny Hamlin. He led a lot of laps at Fontana. He led a couple last week. The strategy didn't really work out in his favor because Andy Houston, for whatever reason, was able to make that strategy work where he was able to go like 35 laps on fuel and stretch it. Houston is now relinquishing spots. He's now dropped back to fifth. He's going to keep losing spots too if he lets Biffle get there. I mean, not like he has much of a choice. He's already on the outside, but still, he's just losing spots slowly and steadily. Jeff Burton, the winner at Auto Club, looking to gain some ground and get into the top 10. He's sixth in points. He's only th he needs 13 points to catch up to Jimmy and get to in the, the top five. But right now, Jimmy's put some cars in between them. So right now, that's not looking very plausible. Andy Houston has basically let Greg Biffle by. And here comes Kenseth to take advantage as well. Oh, maybe not. Now Andy was able to get clear there. As you can see, the advantage Denny Hamlin has. He came across the line there, and they're just getting to the line now. While he's already in turn one. They've given this boy a rocket. He just needs to know how to save it to the end, hopefully. See, Kenseth got around Houston. Johnson now making his move as well. Could be Andy saving his stuff, or maybe something's wrong. Maybe he's got a vibration, or tires feels the tires going down, or something to that effect. I'm not really sure what's happening. That's all right. It's a long race, though. We still got plenty of time. We still got 60 laps when they cross the line this time by. But you see, he has fallen to ninth, I believe that is. Or eighth. When he was running in the... He started from the pole... Seems he has a shorter run car. You see Ryan Newman who started farther back. Jeff Gordon also slowly making ground. He got around his teammate Vickers I think finally. Kurt finally pulled away from Truex. And he's gotten passed by last. By fall Atlanta winner Jeff Green and Jeff Gordon's teammate, Kyle Busch. Some of these guys are making a charge right up to the front. Towards the middle part of this run here. As you see pit stop starting. You see Casey Mears heading down pit road. Alright, it seems like 24 was his number. Let's see if how many guys can push it. 25, 26, 20, maybe even 27.
I think Houston lost another spot. I don't know, maybe not. No, he's just... Alright. He's just hanging out in the back of the top ten for now. Gord's worked his way into the top 15. Now you see he's coming. Uh, who else can we talk about? Robbie Gordon for his startup team. He's looking to impress. He's got a nice... I don't know where he is. He's got a nice uh, mid-20s run going. McMurray struggling with his new team. He thought the move over to Roush would be better for him, but it doesn't seem to help him at all. You see his teammate Danny O'Quinn Jr. back there. Replace the uh, retired Mark Martin. He's having respectable runs for a rookie. He is not in the top 25 in points. But, again, there's still plenty of season left. So I wouldn't fret about points. I just, if I were him, I would worry about experience and just doing whatever I can to learn and get faster as quick as possible so I can be competitive next year or even in 08 and 09. See Dave Blaney and Bobby Labonte back here battling for 27th. Bobby's trying to find a way around him. Hasn't proven successful. Jeremy Mayfield, who started second to last year, up to 29th. Kyle Petty. Tony Raines. Elliot Sadler struggling for this route. Yates team. Yates goes running 22nd and 32nd, so they're not having a great day. Nor a great start to the season. You see Joe Nemechek there. Reed Sorensen having an atrocious start from what it seems. It seems he just can't get anything going. Nowhere to be found in points. Then you see Travis Quapple, Ward Burton, Michael Waltrip. And then you're back to the leaders. Where did Hamlin go? What happened to... De I think Denny Pitt. These guys haven't pit yet. Oh, there we go. Den Denny Pitt this time by. So 30 is Denny's number. And Atwood. And you see At... Uh, oh, that's the same name. Vickers, Jarrett, Gordon. All of these got back markers coming in as well. And now you see the leaders coming in. Jimmy Johnson's going to stay out. Get the five bonus points for leading a lap. Denny coming off pit lane. Jimby will probably come around this time. Hit pit road. See, Carl Edwards also stayed out. He was probably hoping that everyone in front of him would come in, but no, sir, that is not the case. Jimmy Johnson said he's going to stay out. And he'll come in this time. Let's see if Carl will try and stay out. No, he's coming in as well. So Mears unlapping himself. As you see all these guys coming off the pit lane. You see the huge gaggle of cars. Houston, Burden, Biffle, Kane, Kenseth, Boyer, Gordon, Bush. Here comes Atwood around the outside. Let's see what he can do with his track position he has gained. He's going to get past Burden, it seems. Looks like it. As you see, Paul Bernard has also gone several laps down there. I think Atwood's the new leader. No, he's not. Oh, yeah, there's all these guys. Kevin Harvick, Tony Stewart, Greg Biffle, your top three, it seems. We'll see when they cross the line here. Oof, five seconds Denny Hamlin has. They got a lap car of Michael Walter in between them now. 
And his piece seems to be dominant. I don't know if anybody's going to be able to catch him. Or even stay in the same zip code as that FedEx machine. He's trying to put a ward bird in a lap down. Cody's heating up Greg Biff's back bumper through third. As you see, Casey Atwood did get fifth out of this whole deal. So he made up quite a few spots. You see this pack of five battling for seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh. Gordon right behind him leading this pack. Three wide almost for... Ninth, I believe it is. The 9 and 99. Go side by side. Kane has the advantage off the corner. Everyone slots in line. Single file now. Everyone's pretty spread out. Ward Burt does not want to go a lap down. He wants to try and get Travis Quapple to go a lap down first. He wants to try and get around him so that Denny Hamlin will have to lap him, but doesn't look like Danny cares. He's just going to take him three wide almost. Whoa, whoa, he moved almost, kind of, just about. Just about moved the 32 out of the way. This is really slowing him down, I'd have to imagine. Check the gap at the line. Yeah, he lost three-tenths there, messing around with these lap cars. Joe, you need to check the next car to go a lap down after Hamlin clears. Then you see this group of Mears, Petty, Reigns, Sadler, Mayfield, and Sorensen. Dale Jarrett there. In his final year in the UPS Ford, he's going to go to Michael Walter Bracing next year. When that team finally surfaces. So that'll be interesting to see how he'll run over there. Labonte also in his final season in the 18. Looking for more opportunities outside of Joe Gibbs. Wants to open up spots for younger fellas. Like J.J. Yaley, for example. He's the first one I can think of off the top of my head. See McMurray. See where he is. 21st. He's gained a little bit. Newman has damage from something. I'm not, not really sure where that came from. <laughs> Alright, that's interesting. Strange though, he's also still you know, pretty fast and competitive. You see, there's a big gap from Riggs to Turex. Riggs coming off turn two now. Trix going into three. They got the whole straightaway in between them. And it's Jeff Green, Kyle Bush, Kurt Bush, Brian Vickers. Oh! Kurt just stopped out of nowhere and that took out his brother Kyle and Jeff Green. Oh, man. These guys are going to have a fit. Here comes Scott Riggs. Watch out, everybody. They're sitting in the middle of the track. You got to move somehow. Kurt's off the track. Kyle's not off the track. That takes out Schrader, Robbie Gordon. Jarrett's piling in a bit. Here comes the more of the field. They all get it Whoa, down. Here comes Joe Nemechek and Hamlin. The leader gets by. Quapple piles in. Robbie Gordon gets sent spinning. Johnson gets by. Harvick piles into Robbie Gordon. Here comes Greg Biffle. Tony Stewart's in it. Oh, man. All the leaders are getting taken out. Kane, Houston, Edwards is damaged. Kenseth's getting lift up on his side. Gordon's involved. What a turn of events. Burton Boyer have heavy damage. Two of the RCR cars. Junior has heavy amounts of damage as well. Here comes more cars. I don't know what they're going to do with Jeff Gordon. They got around him. They're going to... Jeff Green is damaged. All of Team Killer RCR right there. That took out all four RCR cars in that one wreck. Kyle Busch blowing up. All these guys coming to pit road. 
all these guys involved in the wreck in some way, shape, or form. Denny Hamlin somehow narrowly escaped. Hamlin, your leader now. Johnson, Biffle, Kane. I believe that's Truex in fifth. What a... That was a strange <laughs> turn of events. I don't... I don't even know how to describe... Even begin... Describing what happened. You see Jarrett Reigns and Mears coming up on the track. You see there's pretty much nobody left. There's about 15 cars aside from the ones coming off pit road now. These guys gained a ton of spots out of that. Atwood coming off pit lane, you see. As the cars roll around, let's take a look at that. In an instant replay. You see here on board with Kyle Busch just coming out of the corner, riding along like nothing's wrong. All of a sudden, Kurt Busch checks up massively, and it's in Kyle Busch and Jeff Green. Both of them really had nowhere to go. Right into Kurt, and that's the scary part, seeing all these cars whiz by you. Kyle pulls down the track and gets completely packed by Schrader, Robbie Gordon, Jarrett. Labani avoids it. These guys come down here and avoid it. Nemechek, Hamlin avoids it. And then they just pile in after that. Harvick will come in here in a second. There he is. Boom. Just absolutely destroyed ex-teammate Robbie Gordon. Take a look at it from Harvick's advantage here. You see the smoke already, so that's a problem. But he did come to the caution flag, so he's got to be slowing down now, I'd imagine. But he doesn't slow down at all. He just really comes through here and just runs right into Robbie Gordon. Like he was just, like he wasn't even there basically. And he gets ramped. You see Clint Boyer's on board now that we've switched to. He packs in. You see all four RCR cars involved in that wreck. You saw Jeff Green, who got checked up by Kurt. Harvick, who piled into Robbie Gordon, and then Boyer and Burton, who were just innocent bystanders in what Harvick did. See, these guys coming into the corner, they all slow down relatively well. They all start trying to scatter to miss it, but after Robbie Gordon just comes down the track, they're all just in it for the long haul at that point. They try to avoid, but the guys behind kind of push them all into it, and they check up so much that these guys just, just have nowhere to go. Just innocent bystanders at that point. See Jeff Green coming by. The rest of the field. Gordon is heavy damage, as do a lot of people. But let's take you back to the green flag. Coming back for the green flag now. You see the field rounding turn four. See all these cars are lapped down. You see the 49 of Kevin LePage, I think. Jimmy Johnson, Dale Jarrett. Some of these guys in, who missed the wreck. Some of them. But either way, green flag is back out. You see Hamlin, Biffle, Kate, and Truex rigs your top five. Jimmy makes it three wide on the bottom. Trying to get his lap back. Is he going to be able to do it? Ooh, I don't know. It's drag race on the back stretch here. Jimmy's going to have to sail it in the turn three. And he does. He clears him by a mile. That puts Jimmy back in the lead lap. You see Biffle three wide up top. Jarrett now trying to follow through and get his lap back. Tony Reigns as well. Biffle in second. Kane in third. Mike Wallace, excuse me. I called him Kevin LePage earlier because I was assuming he was in the car. He's also trying to get his lap back now. You see Mears right up on his tail. Passing him now. You see some other guys like Sadler. Back there. Mayfield, Marlin. Truex. Vickers. Atwood, who is currently 8th. Having a strong running. Daniel Quinn, who's 11th. 
And then some of these guys back here who have heavy, heavy damage, like Gordon. You see the hoods off. Same with uh, Jeff Green, Dale Jr. They all have the hoods up off of these things. Houston, I think, is fine. He might just be stuck back here in traffic. Yeah, he's just 19th. I, he didn't hit terribly hard into this wreck. It was mildly nasty. See McMurray going three wide underneath Riggs and Truex. Some of these passes are for a position, some are not. Jimmy Johnson is gone. If only he were the leader. Then someone will be able to challenge Hamlin. See Mears making a move underneath the reins. Down in the turn one. Mayfield's going to follow. Kane, his teammate's going to follow as well. Three dodges all in a row there. Mears now looks underneath Dale Jarrett. Mears looking to get his lap back. The next highest driver is Casey Kane and Greg Biffle back here. Everyone in between them and Hamlin is a lap down. And these guys have pulled away. These guys seem to all be in the, the injured pack. You see Michael Waltrip, Labonte. You see Houston making his way through the pack slowly but surely, gaining spots, passing cars. Trying to get as good a points finish he can as he can now, as he kind of got in that wreck there. In the verge of the top 10 there. See, Mears has gotten around Hamlin. So now that's two cars that have gotten back in the lead lap. Sadler, or Mayfield, excuse me, is probably more than likely going to do the same down at a turn one if he can get just right there it doesn't look like it he'll have to get a good run out of two and try and pass Hamlin down in three or just down the back stretch I'm not I'm not sure what he's trying to do here he might be trying to you know play games with Hamlin since his teammate is second Either way. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to get to him there, so he'll stay a lap down for now. Kane really working Dale Jarrett's bumper. Better hope he doesn't spin him. Good gravy. See Atwood, Burton, Truex making it three wide under underneath Sadler and Marlin. Houston and O'Quinn have worked their way out of the wounded warrior pack. And they're trying to propel themselves into this lead group of cars here. It seems to be working, but they're also dragging some of these guys along. Edwards doesn't have too much damage, it seems. I mean, he has back end. But Newman was competing with back end damage earlier, so. And that back end's crunched. It should not be a problem. I don't, I'd imagine, at least, unless it is now. Depends on how hard he got hit. Bayfield still had not got around him yet. <laughs> Sorry, this is what you get when you pull an all nighter. Biffle making a move underneath Kane, who also made a move simultaneously underneath Dale Jarrett. Biffle backs out of it. Leaving Casey Kane to forge the way towards Denny Hamlin as well. Kane ain't too hot in points either, it seems. Biffle 17th, as we've mentioned before. 
And Kane's not even in the top 26. So a run like this would really help him out. Getting a top five or like, I don't know, maybe something happens to Hamlin. If he can get a win, that'd be pretty pretty helpful towards his championship bid. As you see now, he's caught, he's caught his teammate. He's going to the inside of his teammate. Could have a battle for the lead on our hands here, folks. If he can get by Mayfield in a timely manner and doesn't allow Hamlin to pull away. And if they get the fight, that could drag Biffle right back into this thing as well. He does get around him and he sets his sights on Denny Hamlin. See, Jimmy is pulled away. Mears is starting to, you know, get out of there. And Kane's looking to make a run for the lead here. Mayfield going to the top. Casey Kane is slowing down all of a sudden. I don't know what's happening here. Is this pit stop? Oh, it might be pit stops. Hmm. Yeah, Riggs is slowing down as well, as is, uh, who was that back there? Kyle Petty. Yeah, they're all coming down pit road, so. See these guys here, all three Dodges coming down pit road. See Johnson, Amir's. Hamlin's coming down, Biffle as well. Mayfield's going to get his lap back if for the moment. So are all these guys. Uh, I don't know if McMurray's on the lead lap, so they, uh, he is, so he's going to get the lead out of this thing. These guys are 1-2 with 20 laps, to, 20, 19 laps to go here. I mean, they're going to pit, obviously, but you see these guys back here all fighting for spots. Kane coming off pit road, Riggs, Petty as they came in. These guys all pitting, Johnson... I believe passing all these guys for position now. See Truex coming in. You see uh, Sorensen coming in as well. He's still making a move underneath Jeff Green, who doesn't have a hood. Let's see, where's Casey Kane? We gotta watch for Casey Kane. There he is. These guys coming off pit lane. Kane lost a lot of time on pit lane. That's actually kind of surprising. I'd figure with the fresh tire outlap, he would prevail greatly over that worn out tire in lap. And he would have a full advantage because he'd have fresh tires and they'd have to come in on worn tires. And then when they leave on the outlap, they have fresh tires and only have two lap old tires. So it's not really going to make a difference. But he lost a spot to Biffle. McMurray will come off fourth here. Remember what I was saying about McMurray needing, needing a good run, by the way? Well, I mean, I guess here it is today. Kane's already caught Biffle back, too. He's going to make a move in the turn one, it looks like. He's going to make a move on the freaking straightaway. That Dodge engine does not mess around. You see four Dodge... Chevy, that's how they run in reverse order. I meant to say it the other way around, but again, no sleep. Hamlin the Chevy is pulling away from Kane the Dodge and Biffle the Ford. Keezy Kane made quick work of Biffle there, so now he sets his sights on chasing down Hamlin. Let's see what the gap is at the line. All right, guess not. He's going to take nine years to update. Unless they're not even the leaders. I don't know anymore. Who hasn't pitted? Everyone's pitted. You see Kurt. What about this time? Oh. Well, that's interesting. These guys are a lap down. Some of these guys haven't pitted yet. Well, then where's Atwood? We're watching the provisional lead, but where's Atwood? 
There they are. There's the battle for the lead, I think. Yes, sir. Vickers has the lead. Atwood looks to claim it. You know, he wants to win a race. Atwood would love to get a win in that petty dodge. Trying to see if Casey Atwood has won a race. I don't remember if he has or not. I'm pretty sure he has, but I don't remember where. I know Brian Vickers has not won a race, so this would definitely be his first career win. I mean, they still have the pit, granted, but... Nah, Wood hasn't won. See, they're coming up on Jimmy Johnson now. I think these guys are waiting as long as they can and just hoping for a caution. Jimmy ought to be cur courteous to his teammate here. Yeah, he's letting him go on the inside. Does he tend to go here? This could be the bold strategy of the race. They pit under the caution. So they might... They might be able to go all the way. Oh my gosh, I just thought about that. I don't... Can they? I don't know. I th Maybe. Oh man. Rain's pit, so that worries me because he pit under the caution. Mir's pit as well. We'll just have to watch and see with uh, nine to go here. See if these guys pit or not. Will this be two weeks in a while? Ugh. Will this... <laughs> gosh, I'm so sorry. Will this be two re... Oh my god. Will this be two weeks in a row of crazy strategy? Does not look like it. As I'm as I say that, Atwood pits. So does Sadler. So that leaves Brian Vickers out there all by himself. On his lonesome. Other guys have yet to pit still, but And these guys are catching at an insane rate of speed, so they'll unlap themselves in no time. Whoa, Mears hits the wall. What happened there? I'll have to check back on that. That was strange. Brian Vickers comes to pit road. May I, did he dump Mears? What happened there? Well, I guess here's the three leaders now after they cross the line again. they just There's Atwood coming off the pit lane. Atwood has a lot fresher tires than these guys, so he might be able to chase him back down if he's not too far out, but uh, he's probably too far out now. Biffle making a move underneath Casey Kane. Coming to six to go this time by for Denny Hamlin. Will they be the leaders? Brian Vickers led one more lap as he's coming off the pit lane there. But these are the leaders now, yes. You see here Hamlin starting to pull away and gap these two fellas. Casey Kane makes a daring move around the outside. He made it work. Biffle got stuck back in traffic. Atwood's still going to get a top five out of this, allegedly. Unless McMurray has anything to say about it. Hamlet's now put a lap car in between him and him and Kane, and there'll be five to go when they cross the line this time by. Kane getting past the lap car. Kane's been really good with lap traffic this race, it seems. It seems he can get down there. He can get to them on the straightaway or in the corner, and by the exit of the corner, he's clear of them. He can just go on and start chasing down Denny Hamlin again. But I don't know if he's got enough time. There's quite a gap there. It's I mean that's no That's no car length, that's a couple car lengths. We'll see the gap at the line. He probably lost time there. Yeah, seven tenths, four to go.
We'll be able to see what the gap at the line is this time. It'll be more accurate of their speeds because Casey Kane will not be having to get around lap traffic. I'm bored with Kane now. Let's see what his speed is at the line. Let's see if he's able to gain on Denny Hamlin at all. Oh, he did. He closed it in a tenth and a half, just about. He needs to keep doing that, though. He needs to actually just keep gaining more. He needs to gain like two or three tenths a lap. And I don't know if he could, he's going to be able to do that. Round of the corner. We'll see what the laps are this time as we get two to go. Uh, it's, it's not going to be enough. He's There's too much room between them. Unless Hamlin slips up majorly, Hamlin's got this. I'm pretty sure. Because I don't think Kane can close that last half a second in two laps. We'll see what the gap is of the line one last time. White flag is out for Denny Hamlin because Casey Kane have anything for him. Closed it down another six hundredths. He needs to close it down 44 hundredths. Just under half a second this time by. He needs mirrors to play a factor, but that's not going to happen, it seems. Denny Hamlin has not, never seen this track before, aside from in the Bush series. But he's never raced a cup car here. Out of turn four, Denny Hamlin is going to get his first career win at Atlanta. See, Casey Kane finished second. Greg Biffle, third. Dave Blaney, your Dave Blaney got fourth. Yes, that's awesome. What a run for Dave Blaney. Jamie McMurray, fifth. Casey Atwood, sixth. Brian Vickers, seventh. Scott Riggs, eighth. Martin Trix Jr., ninth. And Danny O'Quinn, wherever he is, there he is, gets a top ten. Then Bobby Labonte, Reed Sorensen, Carl Edwards, Ryan Newman, Kyle Petty, Jeff Green, Jeff Gordon, and Houston gets 18th. Dale Earnhardt Jr. And rounding out your top 20 and lead lap cars is Casey Mears. Well, we thank you all for watching the 2006 Golden Corral 500. Congratulations to Denny Hamlin on getting his first career win. We'll see you at Bristol for the Food City 500.